So in this video we're going to go through the disassembly and reassembly of a mechanical fuel pump on a Triumph Spitfire 1500. This is the fuel pump that doesn't have the 13mm spacer which would go in here. This one just goes with a gasket straight onto the block. So with this fuel pump, this is an aftermarket fuel pump and it is the rebuildable type. Um, I'm not sure whether it's viable to actually rebuild them or not because to be honest, the price of one of these replacement uh, aftermarket pumps isn't that expensive. Um, but it is handy to have a few bits of spares with you um, instead of having to take the whole pump off. So there's only two tools we need. It's a posi driver for these screws around the bottom and a 10 mil socket or um, I've got a, an adjustable here to get this top um, bolt off. So. We'll go ahead and we'll take it apart and I'll show you the bits that you can change on this mechanical fuel pump. So the part number for this pump is RKC1624Z. And the first thing, I've slackened it off already, we've got a 10mm bolt that goes through the top here. Put that to one side and we can take the top off. Now inside we've got an O-ring and then we've got a small, let's tap it out, a small fuel screen. It's not really, well, it is a, it is a filter but it's, it's more just to protect the pump as opposed to, I wouldn't rely on this solely as your filtration for your engine. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take off these one, two, three, four, five screws and we'll see the diaphragm inside. You can hear the diaphragm, this is, this is obviously worked off the cam of the engine and you can hear the pump and what can happen in these in these pumps when they get old or they're not used for a while the the diaphragm inside and I'll show you once we take this off they do split and you can get fuel I have seen it before on outboard engines the fuel can run out of here uh, into the the crankcase of the engine um, on here as well on this engine there are there's like a wheat port I believe that's the wheat port there so if you did have a leak you would see fuel <clears throat> leaking out of there I suppose in a worst case scenario you probably would get fuel coming out of here but this is the first telltale a bit like a water pump you're gonna see fuel coming out of there so we'll just go ahead now and remove these five screws obviously this is a lot easier off the engine but with the 1500 engine and other other older engines that use mechanical pumps, the access is quite good to them. Um, so this is only held on with two screws and the input and output of the hose for the fuel. So it can be done on the engine, but I find it easier to take it off just to get the the um, the access to the pump. And if you're doing it, you might as well change the the gaskets that are on for the mountain surface as well. So. That, this is the last screw coming out here. I can just grab it and pull it out. Put that to one side. Okay, so that's the, the top cover off now. So with the top cover off, we can see that we've got a small diaphragm or one-way poppet valve on there. Um, I don't know whether that's serviceable or not on this fuel pump. Um, I can't see a way of getting it off with the... I'm not sure whether the replacement kit would come with this. I've, I've not actually checked myself. Um, but like I say, this is just to show you the internals and how you go about it. So this red sort of thick silicon gasket here, or whatever it's made of, neoprene, this is the diaphragm itself. And when the cam actuates it, you see it pulls down. And there's a bit of a pumping action going on there. In conjunction with that other one-way valve in there. So what tends to happen is you perish in the split and you lose your pumping action. As you can see under there, you can see this, like the return spring. I'm sure there's seals in there. So if there was a leak, I'd imagine on this sort of uh, fuel pump, you possibly wouldn't get fuel coming out of here, but you'd definitely, out of that wheat port there, you can see under there, just under there, there's a hole. Obviously the fuel would never get under there normally, unless there's a split. Uh, I've seen these corrode before when you get water in them and they do get sharp and they, and they just puncture the diaphragm there. But in the kit, obviously, you get a new one of these, you get the O-rings, the fuel filter. And to replace that, you literally just take that little top nut off there. That 
disc comes off and you literally just lift that off, put a new one on, secure that again, and then fit the top cover. It's it's pretty simple really. Um, unless you've seen it taken apart like in this video, it does look, I wouldn't say daunting, but a bit, bit of the unknown, but now you can see it. I hope that's uh, clarified a few things for you. Um, I'll reassemble it for you. It's as simple as putting it back together, uh, taking it apart, sorry. Like I say, I'm sure you could go further. I'm sure we could take off this this uh, cam arm here and the springs and everything. But to be honest, in the in the service kits, like I say, the service kits are quite expensive. And this is a an aftermarket pump. I think it's about thirty pounds. And the replacement like uh, diaphragm and everything, that's not far off that anyway. So to, in all honesty, if I was doing this and I had a split diaphragm, I would probably just change the pump um, as a whole. But like I say, sometimes you haven't got the, the luxury of a, a second pump or you might have a, a genuine uh, Triumph pump which is a lot more expensive and the replacement gaskets and filter might be the cheaper option. Like I say now, we'll, we'll put it all back together, very simple and that will conclude the video. So putting it back together, we just want to put the cover back on there, we'll align the holes. I don't believe it matters the orientation correct me if I'm wrong, that you put this back on. I don't see why it would matter because it's, there's no, um, it's uniform underneath, it's all the same. So I don't think it would matter. I think literally it'd be your preference as to where the inlet and outlet would be um, for the fuel system. Well, let's say we'll just screw these back down. I know a lot of people um, have changed. You can get blanking kits that blank off these uh, mechanical pumps and they go for an electric pump. Now, also with an electric pump, you're gonna get a higher higher fuel pressure. Uh, aids in starting, because obviously you're getting primed to the carburetor straight away. Whereas with this mechanical pump, you're only getting fuel to the carbs when the engine's rotating. Um, the one thing that you will need if you do go for a uh, an electric pump you need a fuel regulator or you can over pressurize um, but um, I have seen let's see we'll just put the uh, the fuel filter in there now and the o-ring on top let's say I have seen that you can get a fuel pressure regulator and filter like an all-in-one so say that we we'll just put the, uh, the top cover on we'll put the fuel filter then the gasket and this this top one here this is the fuel inlet and that's the fuel outlet so then we just get the 10 mil adjustable on there. Just wind that down nice and tight. That's it. So that's it all back together. Yeah, so you can hear it. You hear it pumping away there. Uh, like I say, yeah, for the um for the electric fuel pumps, if you go for an electric fuel pump, you do need a a, a regulator as well. Uh, you can get a filter stroke regulator like an all-in-one but a, a top thing to have if you do go for that is to get an, uh, an inertial uh, cut out as well so if you do crash the inertial switch cuts the fuel pump off otherwise you just have the fuel pump running if you do have a fuel line rupture and a crash you just spray fuel everywhere um, obviously in a modern car it would probably just do that automatically but in an old car if, the, if that 12 volt pump's got voltage it'll just keep pumping uh, so that's the conclusion of the video there quick disassembly show you what's inside reassembly uh, please give a like and subscribe if you haven't already thanks for watching